uh, hi welcome to my youtube channel i'm simia gebra and i'll be taking you on um, python functions today okay now i'll be looking at some functions how to create functions in python we'll start with okay we'll say functions um the primary and most important method of code organization and we use in python, in python. what we mean is um Python programming, we can create function that we hold a setting, a kind of uh, operation. Then we'll see how these um, functions can be created. And let's start with uh, if I want to create a function in Python, you start by saying uh, div. Div is the um, way of defining the function create a function by using this attribute div okay then followed by the function name let me say my function function okay then this parenthesis now why are we placing the parenthesis I told you functions in Python mostly carry this parenthesis okay so we're putting this parenthesis then followed by an argument followed by an argument let's say argument is name Okay, let's say it's name. Um, then the next thing you put your column. Okay, then you enter. The next thing we'll do is you type return. Now, let me let you know some. There are some important points to consider while defining functions. Okay, like we said, uh, a function should always have a return value. Now. A function should always have a return value. Should always have a return value. Don't forget that. And the uh, return value here, we use a return keyword. Okay. So, so let's say that let the return value be name. Let's return this argument still. Okay. Now, if return is not defined, then it returns none. Okay. It returns nothing. Then the function overload function overloading is not permitted. Okay, we're increasing function. So we're going to see how we can print this. So what does function do? Function is a kind of is a method where we we have to define something like I said earlier, define an operation and try to reuse it in our code. Okay, you reuse it. Once you have defined a function, you reuse it instead of Typing the operation again, like now I can say, okay, if I have a child, I just I cannot just say, hey, come here, or I have children. If I want to call one of them, I cannot say, hey, come here. So I have to specify, call that person by his name, okay, his or her name. That defines that this person, this name has been attached to. So anytime I need him or her to do something for me, I call by the name. Okay, so that is what function does for us in the code. Anytime you need to do the operation of the function, um, it's meant for calling instead of writing and the code over and over again. Okay, so now let's continue. Let's print this out. Let's see how we can call this out. Print function name my function then for the parenthesis okay let's give it a name let's say the letter name be and let's say Stella Stella then let's print it out okay you see Stella has been printed out okay so we've called the function anytime you want to call a function like I said you give a child a name then you Whenever you want to call, what you do is you call the name. So we call the function and we give the argument a parameter. We give the argument a value here so you can see. So that is that. So we'll move further. You can use a Python to return a single value or a multiple value. Okay. You can use Python to return multiple values or single values. In this case, we return single values. Now let's see. Oh, sorry. I have to comment on this code. Okay, sorry. 
don't want to always forget that I told you as a good programmer you try to make comments on your code so that anybody reading your code will know what you are doing okay now um, let's let's say okay let's say multiple Let's you let's see how we can create a function for addition adding two numbers. We start by the def that we name a function. Okay. So um, what next? You specify the argument. Let's say number one. Number number two. So number one, number two. Then don't forget to put your code. Whenever you are done putting your code, you enter, then return, return. Remember, I said, don't always forget the return value. Okay, don't forget the return value. The function should always have return value after you have finished defining the name and the parameters. Okay, so let's give it a um, return value. Return value means this is what I want this function to do for me. So this is what we want the function to do. We want it to add the two parameters that will be given in our code. So we see. So we are doing that. And let's see. Let's define. Let's say number number one is equals to forty-seven. Number two, number two, let's say nine. What I'm doing here, I'm initializing the parameters I want to use. Okay, so don't get confused. Don't get confused that here is a different variable. Here, here is just for formality sake, just to indicate that we want to return two values that will add themselves. Now, this addition I wrote here is not actually what is making this function to add. It is this return value what you are specifying this return value that makes that is making this to return the addition of this so what is the result of doing this anytime you call it by this name it will do this thing okay so let's let's go now let me give it a let me give the sum of it a return value a, a variable and let's say um, okay so i will say Addition, addition, okay. Number, number one, comma, number two. Now you see, I'm not writing the operation. I'm not writing the number one plus number two. I'm calling it and I'm giving the variable I've initialized here. I'm putting this, this number one in of this number two in place of this so since I've initialized it I have to just put it here I can just put only these numbers I can put 47 here I can put 9 here it will still give me the same answer okay so you can try that but let's let's output this as we are calling the variable holding this because we have defined this with the variable if we are not defining the variable we just call it straight so let's go run Okay, do 47 plus 9, you see, you get 56. So, all we did here was to, okay, I have to still create that function, control backslash. And what we did here was we called call. So the down here we'll call the function. Okay, so let's move ahead. 
okay now i can i can do another thing let's say let's create another function let's say if i okay let's see i told you when you want to start defining your function you use the def and when you use this you give it a name then column and you enter then don't forget your read okay in this case i worry i want to see how let's check something in our profile let's let's say age 18 height let's say height okay I, let's say six feet tall let's say six six point one i don't know which how tall as that so let's say weight weight let's say weight weight 80 kg then all right after that okay 80 kg okay now let's Let's return. Let's type our return value. What do we want this uh, function to give us? And let's say we want it to put age. Okay. Let let it output. output. Okay. Okay. Let's say my. Okay, let's not get ourselves confused okay let's let's take this out let's take this out let me just give you a simple let me just give you another way of doing this thing now let's say age comma height comma weight okay let's say is equal to profile now you see this okay let's see run and let's print let's print let's print age comma height comma weight okay and let's see what it will give us Okay, you see it's been updated here so what we did there was we called the function sorry we called call function okay so okay let's move further so we have some um, built-in sequence function okay built-in sequence function of python are okay enumerate enumerate we have uh, sorted we have reversed we have zip and the rest okay so we'll be looking at this built in okay let's 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 put the head in here built built in sequence function okay Sequence function. Um, like I said, I, think I made mention of the enumerate. So let's start with the enumerate. So what the enumerate does it it um, keep track of indices and what a corresponding data mapping. So let's see where you map data like you're saying yeah, number one is this, number two, this, number three, this. So let's see how we can do that. Now 
let's use the built-in built-in sequence function and the marriage okay let me get them one after the other okay get them one after the other function first of all let me marry it okay so this one is let's start with it let's say um okay what are we going to use okay so here is the list of fruits okay you can see it's a list of fruits now um, we can say for for i comma name in enumerate food list. A for loop is a for loop so you always same thing goes with functions you you, you put your column after it then you press enter then print i comma name okay let's see what this will give to us run this run this so you can see so this is what i said i said uh, enumerate what it does it keeps tracks of indices and corresponding data mapping you can see here we got indices we got the uh, data mapping of our list you can see it zero mango so that is a way to apply enumerate okay we say it's a built-in sequence function you can see it arranges it in a sequence okay now we'll go to sorted sorted when you say sort what does it mean to return a, a kind of new list for a given sequence okay when you sort something okay now let's look at um um builds okay builds So now let's, let's sort let's sort numbers. Let's say sort numbers. In this case we want to say okay. Um, when we want to sort, uh, when we want to do sorting, we want to sort anything, any number or whatever. What you do is you use the sorted is a sorted function sort now want to give a list sorry to make a list to do whenever you have this square bracket with list of data types with list of different elements maybe of different data types in it know that this is a list okay so list comes with square bracket so let's say 78 15 Three, sixty-five, ninety. Now let's see. Let's see how we can sort these. Okay, these numbers. Okay. See. You see that they sorted. So this is one of the function of Python. Python can easily sort something for you. You see, fifteen, forty-three, in sending order. Okay. So. Now let's move. Okay, let's try and sort a string value. Let it not look as if it's only numbers we're sorting. Let's try and sort a string value. Sort a string. Okay. Let's see how we can sort a string value. String value. What do you do at 
told you whenever I want to sort anything, you first of all write the sorted function. Sorted. Okay. Now, since we are not using this in this case, right? We are using string. We use a single quote or a double quote. Let's say and data 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 science data science okay or data analytics whatever one you want to use and let's run you see it has been sorted now look at <laughs> it's starting with what the empty then a you see we have two a's you know why this empty is here? We have an empty space here, so Python recognizes it. Okay, so I'm starting with the empty. Start a a, so you can see it. Okay, so now let's move further with the reversed and zip and built-in function, and we we'll see the reverse what I treat the data in reverse order. Okay, so let's let's. okay it's like um, something something in reverse order okay now let's create a list let's create a list create a list of numbers the numbers is easy for me so you can create a list of whatever you want I think control backslash Okay, let's do um, of numbers of range 20. Okay, for range 20. Okay, let's we'll see. Let's see. List of numbers. You can, name, you can name a variable, whatever you want to name it as. Okay, so uh, list of numbers are variable. So I, I said want to do a list of numbers for range 20 okay so there's a function python has range is a function that has put the range of the numerical value you put inside okay let's say 20 so specify here i will say okay now let's putting this list here is to tell us that we want to change this we want to change this to a list if I want it to be a double I, will, I can still indicate it double here I want it to be a dictionary I can indicate it did okay I want it to be a set I can put set to return that uh, data type okay so in this case, right, if you want it to return a list, this range of value, you want it to be a list. So a list in the bracket, which will have reversed as a function of this variable, of this range that is here. So let's see. Can you see range of values from 1, from 0 to 20? You see? You can see that. 
told you in Python, Python starts counting from zero. Okay, and if you count it, there are 20 values here. So the range of 20. All right, now you can see it's in reverse order. Now we'll move further. You can also define list of subjects and count. Okay, let's do that. Let's define um, some strings. And let's try to see how we can bring out the count. Okay. Now let's try something. So you see here uh, we defined a list of courses and um, we want to use the zip function. Okay. So let's see. Okay, let me say course count. Course count. Let's see how we can do this. Let's um, check. This. Okay, let's run this. Okay, let me add. In this case, we want to. Okay, let's say we want to use the zip function. Zip is comment. Zip function. Pair. I want to use it to pair to pair the word data elements of list. Okay, you can see now. Let's let's say that um, total cost total cost total cost is equals to I want to I want to I want to kind of give them kind of give them pairs okay I want to see how we can pair them all right so let's zip we're going to zip our courses and our and our course count so let's see courses comma then courses count Cost count, so cost count. Okay, now you see. Let's have put total courses. Okay, let's run. Why? Okay, it's telling us that it has been zipped at this memory value. Okay, so if um, there are cases where it will run, you see the zipped, where you see the zipped um, output pairing themselves, you see one English, two math, three statistics, four economics in a double. If you run that and you got it that way, okay, good for you. Now let's move further. Let's check the type of what we did here. Let's check the type of these total courses. Let's see type. Total courses. Yeah, you see, it's a zip. It's a zip file. Okay. Now let's move. Let's go to the next aspect of this course. We have control flow, control flow statement. That's what we'll be looking at. You know, control flow statement. For those of you that have done programming before, we have if, we have as if, and we have as. Okay. 
So we'll do the control backslash. That's the next thing we are going to do. The control flow. We want to talk about the control flow in Python. That's the if, the else if, and the else statements. They are mostly called that. They are commonly used. Uh, the control flow statements. Okay. Now uh, they are used to make conditions. Okay. Is to make conditions. Even in English, we also use if to make conditions. In this case, in programming too, we use if to make conditions, as if and else. Okay, now let's indicate something. Now let's say score. Score is equals to, okay, let me say I got 70 over 100. Alright, then I said then let's run it okay let's write here if condition condition okay let's run it then you see if let's make a statement that if the score of a but this is score of a particular student if the score is not up to 50 it's not up to 50 or more than 50 we we'll say that the person has failed but if it is up to 50 or more than 50 we we'll say the person has passed let's say if score if score is less than okay, let's use 70. If score is less than 70, then we put now. Whenever you are making an if statement, you first of all say if, then the condition of what you want to do, then the column. In this case, we say if score, if the score of the student that was initialized, that his score or his or score was initialized. It's less than 70. If it's less than 70, we say that let's print what will be the output. We say that what we say failed. Okay. Now when you do that, comma, else, else, what happened? Else will print pass. Okay, now see, so we are saying here that this is a particular score of a student, and we're saying that if the score of that student is less than 70, okay, let's if it is less than 70, then we say the student has what has failed, or if or else, else means the other way around, like if it is up to 70 or above, means. Same pass now. Let's run it and see which of the statements it will print for us. Okay, you see, giving us pass because the score of the student is up to 70. Now let's break it down. Let's say we have 57 here. Yeah? The score of the student is 57. Let's run it again and see what it will give us. See, the student says student failed because. We indicated a condition here that if then the condition is if the score is less than 70 we are saying print failed the person has failed else we say the person passed so let's go ahead let's go ahead we are clear with that now let's take um, another okay let's say each let's say each let's find the age um, age of a student, okay. Age of somebody, let's say age, age, let's say 16. Okay, initialized it. The age is 16. Now we say if age is less than less than 18, don't forget if. You put your if and you're having your condition then the next thing to do is what to put your column don't forget that 
Now we are saying if age is less than 18, let's print. Um, okay, let's print. It's less than 18. Let's say persons is minor or okay. let's say minor. Okay, let's see, let's see, at least, let's see, or rather, let's say 13, if the age of person is less than 13, okay, age of person is less than 13, we say, if um, age is less than 13, let me, I just want to give a, no, wait, let's leave it back to 16. Okay, if h if the age is less than 13 we say print minor okay now we say we use another statement let's give, let's, let's give another condition as if h is equals to or Greater than thirteen, we say that let's print what we want to have put here. We say print. I mean, the person is a teenager. Say teenager. Then we say else. If none of this condition apply, then we say. To print that the person is an adult. 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 Now let's see what this will give us. Okay. Let's see what it will give us. Oh, we're having a syntax error here. Okay, this is the reason why we're having an error here. Look at. We say invalid syntax. Okay. We say in this place that um, we already specified that less than. Okay. So we have to do. We have to do greater than here. Let's see. Wow. Still returning an error for us. Okay. So we are saying invalid syntax. I think I know where the error is coming from. Okay, I think I know where the error is coming from. Where the error is coming from. Okay, okay, is this place? Let's because yeah, let's run it. Teenager, you see, you cannot place um, equals to before great before greater than or less than sign. That's why we're receiving the error there. Okay, you can see. The age of the person is 16. If age is less than 13, we say we should print minor. S, else, that is, else if means another condition. If age, else, if age is greater than or equal to 13, we say that person is a teenager. Teenagers start from 13 to 19. So now we say else, else. Print adult. Okay, I have to specify something here. Greater than or equal to 13, or less than, less than or equal to 19. I think that's the best listen for teenagers because teenagers start from 13 to 19. So greater than or equal to 13, less than or equal to 19. Let's run. Okay, good. So this is how we use the if, s, if, and s function. Okay, now let's look at for loop. Let's look at for loop. For loop. For loop. Okay. Let's look at for loop. We say for loop is used to iterate over a collection like a list or a tuple 
or an attractor. Now, when you say I treat, means runs through. Okay, do I say runs through? Yes, I treat, repeats. So that's what for loop is all about. Now, let's see a list of. Okay, here we have a list of cars Toyota, Ford, or J Benz, and BMW. Now we'll see how can I treat over them. Okay. Let's see how can I treat this run by initializing it. So we say for let's say for I in in um, cars for I in cars. Let's see for I in cars. Let's see. I will say print print i say I need to move first okay you see so we are saying I trade over as we are trading over a collection of the list so you can see we are listing it that's what we mean okay now there are there's the you can see apply conditions yeah you can see apply condition Okay, we can say okay let's say I told you before if you want to include a non a null value you can just add a, a non non okay now showing us that this value here is null it's empty so let's see let's let's add a condition here let's add a condition here okay if if I is known so if I told you we use if statement for making conditions so if I I means each and every one of these elements in the list okay so if any of them is a null value then we, when you are when you are iterating through it and any of them is a null value we are saying that okay don't forget to put your colon sign then enter so we can say continue okay now let's print it and see what it will give us so if it gets here and if it what this statement means if it gets to a null value you should cross it over and continue Okay, you can see it passes it and continue so that is that statement now we can include a break statement that if okay let's make another statement let's copy this statement here let's copy it bring it here we can say if i is a null value then we can stop it there by writing break statement you can use the break statement okay so let's let's comment on this break statement okay is the break statement so let's run and see what happens print okay No, it's not what I needed here. No, this cannot give us the list again. We are expected to break it from here. So only this that will be listed. Let's let's run it again. Let's run it again. Okay, you see, it's what I said. Yes. So you see what is saying is for I in cars means for every element in this uh, list. If i is known, if i is a null value, what will happen? You should break it from here. Really, you find that, that any of the elements in null value should break it and not continue. So we'll print it out. We'll print the elements that that um, um, are legible for the what the statement. So 
Now we'll continue. We have another um, control flow which is called Y loop. So we have another control flow statement which is called Y loop. Y loops that do control backslash. Okay. So we we'll say, uh, okay. Add. Okay, so now we say a while loop specifies a condition and a block of code that is to be executed. Okay, until the condition, until the condition evaluates or force the loop to stop. Okay, so the while loop will keep running until you give it a condition that will force it. Or for, the loop is explicit. It, it runs like, how do I say it? It's just like you make statement about something. If you keep running, that will keep happening until you give it a condition where it will be forced and it will stop. Okay? Now, don't get confused about with my explanation. Now, I will give you a hint of what I mean. Okay? Now, let's see something. Let's see. We have something like temperature, temperature, and um, let's say the temperature is 100. Okay, okay we see why, why temperature, why temperature is less than 95. Mind you, anytime you specify any loop to the condition you always include your column here okay then press enter and print print temperature then we say temperature is equals to temperature minus one okay what this is saying is that we initialize our temperature okay to 100 and we say well, why temperature is greater than 95 we know the temperature is greater than 95 so why the temperature is greater than 95 it should print the temperature and the temperature in this case is 100 so you should print the temperature why the temperature is greater than so we see that temperature is greater than 100 so definitely this condition will work they say let it keep let it print temperature it means let it print 100 then this statement down means temperature is equal to temperature minus one let it keep reducing by minus one let it keep reducing by minus one okay let's run okay I think it produces by minus one. You see, Why temperature is greater than ninety five? So when it got to the point where it is equal to ninety five, it stopped. Okay, so you see, that is what the while loop. While loop will keep running until you give it a statement that will make it force and it will stop. Okay, now let's look at the last thing. In this class look at exception exception handling exception handling and that's what we, the last thing we we'll look at in this course okay now exception handling means how we handle error in python okay handling python errors or exception gracefully is actually this is actually an important part of building um, uh, pro, uh, robust programs and algorithm. Okay, so you want to state anytime we do something that has an error in Python, what should the code say? What should the error imply? Like cases where we had errors, they're showing us inter uh, syntax error and I don't know, uh, name not defined like that. So that is what uh, exception handling means. Now let's let's define a 
let's create a function let's create a function create function control slash and let's create function let's say if let's say um, float float number okay number number is that the float number is the is the function function name and I put my colon and then don't forget your return value but my return value in this case say return float 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 number now remind remember you can recall that what we're doing at data types I told you anytime you have any data type before any data type the parenthesis and you have a number in it it means that you want to change that number inside here to what to that data type specified here so whoa this is trying to say that we want to have a function which takes float number float data type okay so let's see let's test something Let's say test okay. Let's say float. Let's just say let's just let's not write any comments so that will be fast. Let's say float. Okay. Float number. Then a bracket calling the function let's give it a number let's say five point okay let's see wow. okay you can tell me why we're having an error here okay we're having an error we'll say float number is not defined that is because I want to call this okay like why I'm having this error is because I actually initialized this as, as I created this function. I didn't run it. So let's remember to run it. Okay. You can see. Now let's say um, we want to okay, indicate. Let's see. specifying a string value in it okay let's say test float okay let's run it we'll get an error okay now you see the error means that there's a wrong argument has been passed okay a wrong argument has been passed so it's supposed to be a numerical value because it's numerical value that can actually function well with this function okay all right so a, a wrong argument was typed okay now you see the error so now we want to want to see how we can create an uh, exception exception block that handles our error if we type an, something that gives us an error we will see the output of what it will give us like this one now has been Predefined okay. Now let's see exception handling. We try uh, exception, exception handling. Let's try, try accept. That's what we use. That's what we're going to use. Okay. Now let's see, let's define a function. Let's define. Let's see, let's see, use that float. Whatever. Let me see, copy it. Copy it. Copy it, copy. Copy it, okay. Now let's place it. Okay. Now we say uh, we define our, fun, our function here. Now 
want it to admit an error. So let's take this off first. Okay. We do have people with error. Then we use try. Say try. Enter. Then let's see what the error is supposed to return. Return. Okay. Let's see. If we define a, a function, then we use try except we're using try, we'll be using try and except so try return return float the number which is argument then we say except so we're using the try except block okay now we say value error value error then don't forget to put your because this is this is a block also so you put your code then enter return now what we are saying here is let the function try and return this except value error if there is a wrong passing of uh, argument or whatever error we whatever wrong thing we input you are saying that except means let it give us this particular value we want to put in the, as a return value when there is a value error and let's say let it write not not that is not a number not a number Input is let's specify. Let's say input is number, so it will return actually what the person inputted. So let's run this and see. Okay, now let's test the code. Let's, let's, let's put a wrong a wrong value let's put a wrong value in this function let's say let's say let's put a string value test okay let's see you see so we can impute our own error when creating our code when writing our code see not a number the input is test so this is all part of it but this is what me i, I defined myself so thank you very much for the class thank you for staying tuned with me okay um, I, I will see you in the next class where we'll be discussing some other things okay we are done i believe we are done with the with the python basic class we are done with it we are done with it i think i don't have we don't have to do so much coding for in python for data science we just have to do for the line we are as a data scientist you need the basics of python okay these are the areas that you'll be involving yourself when doing data uh, science or analytics okay so we don't have to do so much in python we just have to learn the basics okay because these are the essential things we need to know you don't have to go over a very large tutorial as python as a python developer okay because software engineers have to go deeply into it but you you are just using it for some operations so you don't really need much of it okay so let's end here then our next class will start the essentials of uh, data analytics of data science we we'll have NumPy, we have Pandas, and the rest. So many libraries we'll be using. So stay tuned. Thank you for staying with me to the end of the class. Thank you very much. See you.